Forever 21, the fifth largest fast fashion retailer in the United States, is reportedly facing bankruptcy. Founded in 1984 by a Korean-American couple, Forever 21 operates more than 800 stores in the US, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. This week, right now, we'll look into Forever 21 and the story of its rise and fall. Forever 21 began as the store called Fashion 21, with 900 square feet in Highland Park, Los Angeles. Do Won Jang and his wife Jin Suk Jang, who immigrated to the United States from South Korea in 1981, opened the store in 1984 with only 11,000 US dollars in savings. After the store took off in LA, they expanded to other locations, and the store's name was changed to Forever 21. Originally, Forever 21 only sold clothes for women, but later expanded to menswear as well. The company now sells accessories, beauty products, home goods, and clothing for women, men, and girls. And the clothing is sold to all ages, from toddlers to adults. Forever 21 is known for its trendy styles and low pricing. Designs similar to those seen in South Korea were sold to and targeted at the LA Korean American community. In its first year in operation, sales totaled 700,000 US dollars, and by 2013, it generated a revenue of 3.7 billion US dollars. It currently operates more than 800 stores in 57 countries around the world with about 30,000 employees. It has more than 500 stores in the US alone, including a huge store near the White House in Washington, DC. Mr. and Mrs. Zhang were listed on Forbes' 2019 billionaire list with their total net asset estimated at 1.5 billion US dollars. However, Forever 21 has faced a major crisis due to the recent downturn cycle in the clothing distribution industry, as e-commerce companies such as Amazon started to dominate the clothing distribution market. Offline clothing retailers have not been able to escape a liquidity crisis. According to Bloomberg, Forever 21 is preparing for a potential bankruptcy filing as the fashion retailer's cash dwindles and turnaround options fade. The company has been working on restructuring its debt, but negotiations with possible lenders have so far stalled. Therefore, focus has shifted toward securing a potential debtor in possession loan to take the company into Chapter 11, even as some window remains to strike a last minute deal that keeps it out of court. The company has also been involved in various copyright controversies. Most recently, the pop star Ariana Grande is suing Forever 21 and seeking 10 million US dollars in damages claiming that the retailer used her unauthorized likeness in a social media campaign. Bankruptcy filing does not mean that Forever 21 will be closed. It will rather help the company shed unprofitable stores and recapitalize the business. However, the fact that Forever 21 is preparing for potential bankruptcy can be big news to American teenagers born in the 1990s, because Forever 21 was a kind of a trendsetter for them. Let's take a listen to what Jessica had to say, who spent her teenage years in California in the 2000s. Well, when I was in middle school and high school back in the States, Forever 21 was like the place I would just go to with my friends just to take pictures and try on the clothes. So if they all close down, then I think it's going to hit me like one of my teenager memories is gone. What are your thoughts on this? Please let me know with your comments below and thank you for watching Korea Now.